The 2010 Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama moves to a brand new venue for the series, New Jersey Motorsports Park. Today, we'll see the highlights of some exceptional action. And in the next hour, we'll learn about the new green tire being used in the series, take a look at Porsche Worldwide, and head down to Mexico to see how Patron is produced. Also in the next hour, we'll take you inside race control and give you an inside look at the family life of the Cisneros brothers. And it's all coming up next, right here on Speed. Into the 2010 Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama and rounds five and six. I'm Greg Kramer, and as always, we'll have Jamie Howe diving into the series and talking to the drivers throughout the show. We are, as we mentioned, at a new venue for the series, New Jersey Motorsports Park. The facilities sit on a beautiful 700 acres near the megalopolis of Philadelphia, New York, and Washington, D.C. And for the first time, a field of all Porsche power will take the green flag on one of the two permanent road courses here, Thunderbolt Raceway. The two and a quarter mile asphalt track features 14 turns and a half mile long straight. Let's hear a bit more about racing here from Porsche factory driver and coach and secret weapon of the NGT team, Wolf Hensler. Okay, we are coming on the front straight of uh, New Jersey Motorsports Park. Top speed is around 150 into turn one, just at the curb at the inside and then on the curb at the exit. I'm going back to third gear hitting that curb very hard and trying to make it straight into the chicane and try to keep the car at the left to get a good entry for this right turn. Exit on the curb, going to third gear, going up to fourth gear and braking at the one mark, turning in very fast, turn very open in the beginning and at the end a little bit tight but overall a very fast turn, hitting the curb a little bit at the inside and then open the steering wheel for that very, very long right turn. It's full throttle here, I go up to fourth gear and it's very hard to find the right mark to brake here and it's very difficult because you are turning and you have to brake. Uh, it's very hard not to lock the wheels. I go down to second gear, it's a short acceleration into that hairpin, stay in second gear, I do more or less of a triangle and get the car ready for the last turn. When we come back, we'll see how they qualified and then head down to Mexico for a look at how Simply Perfect Patron is produced. The Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama is presented by the Patron Spirits Company, the number one ultimate tequila in the world, Simply Perfect, by Yokohama, where technology drives better tires and by speed. And welcome back, everybody. Let's get right to the starting lineup. Ross Smith keeping his string intact. He now has five straight pole positions, four wins on the season. But Marco Cironi comes down from Canada onto the front row. Chris Cumming and Daryl Carlisle fill out row two. We move to the uh, third row, Amadeo Quiros and Rob Walton. Then row four, Tim Rosengrant and a newcomer to the gold category pole, Amadeo Quiros Jr. You see the green stripe indicating the gold class. Row five, Jorge Coqui Trails, Michael Shine. Row six, Enrique Cisneros and Kendall Smith. Row seven will be Jay Policastro and a platinum qualifier, Peter Lasafra. Then we move back to the eighth row, Eduardo Cisneros and Andre Cisneros. Then in row nine, it's Joe Policastro Sr. and platinum qualifier, John Baker. And you'll see next, all alone at the back, excluded is Carlos Eduardo. More on that in a moment, but here's Jamie Ha with our pole sitters. After four races of winning flag to flag, Ross Smith is starting on pole again. And Ross, your engine was taken away after that last race, taken to Porsche, confiscated, went through, but it came back clean. How, how rewarding is this pole compared to the others? Well, it's great. You know, that's water under the bridge right now. Uh, we got to think ahead of uh, what we're doing right now. And uh, again, this this track, we really want to be very consistent and clean and be, you know, we won't can't drop a wheel. We drop a wheel. 
we've learned in practice that this this track can really bite you. Out of all venues that we're going to be at, I, I believe that we need to be most consistent here than anywhere else. I got to thank Ryan Eversley for the first time coaching me. He's really helped me get up to speed here. Um, my dad back home, I really appreciate everything you've done to me. This Maxwell Paper Porsche Cup car number five has been so good to me. And, uh, you know, my family others back home, I appreciate everything you've done for me. And only a second race weekend in the series. Amadeo Kiros Jr. is starting on pole in the gold class. Amadeo, coming off of a win in your last round on pole today, what message are you sending your competitors? Yeah, well, uh, I'm just trying the hardest, you know. Uh, I, I couldn't believe uh, I had this opportunity to be here and uh, I'm just trying the hardest I can and it's working so I'm really happy. Thanks very much, Jamie. You know, in a previous show, we took you to the source of Simply Perfect Patron, the agave plant. Today, we're going to give you a look at how it's created. Once the agave make it out of the field, they are halved and corded and loaded by hand into small traditional masonry ovens where they're slow roasted in small batches for 72 hours to get just the right taste. Fresh from the ovens, the agave are placed by hand on conveyor belts and then macerated, a process similar to the crushing of grapes to make wine. The shredded agave is then loaded into a traditional stone pit where a giant two-ton stone wheel called a tahona crushes them. The juice extracted from this ancient process is called agua manuel, or honey water. The juice is transferred into pine wood cast where it will ferment for three days allowing the sugar to transform into alcohol. From there, it'll be pumped into traditional copper stills for distillation, where it's boiled at varying temperatures, condensed, refined, and double distilled. I'm free to experiment and it has as another part of the philosophy of the company. Uh, we are leaders because we are keep on experimenting. We are taking risks. Some experiments will find some other fails, but we are experimenting and trying new things. That's why we have a, such a, a big portfolio of very good products. And are given the freedom to think and are, are given the tools to do it. A quality product throughout. When we come back, a little bit of a treat for you. An all onboard look at the highlights from round five. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park, Thunderbolt Raceway, and a look at round five, mostly from Porsche Motorsport onboards. But of course, we will start from outside the car as the green flag waves on round five. Ross Smith brings them up to the line, and immediately we're going to hop on board with Ross and take a look from his vantage point, the approach to turn one. To his left is Marco Cironi, and Ross, you can see him trying to get a little bit of an angle in. Gets through the corner just fine. Now we hop on board with the gold category pole sitter, Amadeo Kiros Jr. Tries to get around the outside of the seven of Tim Rosengran. Doesn't get that done, but does hang on to the class lead. Now, a lap later, we hop on board with Daryl Kylow and watch up front. As you can see right there, a couple of cars go off. Those were the two guys out front. Now we watch from Ross's viewpoint. He goes around a potential bit of a tap and some contact with Chirone. Both of them ended up off course. Now, back on board with Carlos Eduardo. Remember, he started last. He was excluded from qualifying due to a pit lane violation regarding tech. So he had to mount a furious charge from the back of the pack. And all of this action at the front, you can see car is evasive, going everywhere. That is exactly what he needed. It opened up some opportunities, and he pounced on them. Now, Mike Shine driving for Alex Joe Bracing. He discovered turn one at Thunderbolt is a big challenge, especially it's a track brand new to him, not a lot of familiarity with that, and a rearward weight-heavy car, even with the magic of Porsche. Now we hop on board with Amadeo Kiros, leading from pole in the Gold Cup. He has a big moment. There goes Kendall Smith. That puts him into the Gold Cup lead. Jorge Treos, Koki Treos, 
in the Platinum class goes through. Amadeo Quiro is still struggling, however. Watch this. Here comes Enrique Cisneros. That moves him up into second in class. Here comes Carlos Eduardo, dead last, remember, from that problem in qualifying. But watch Enrique. He runs wide. Somebody else has already gone off a little bit of target fixation. There comes Tim Rosengrant. Those two have a little bit of a get-together. Quiros was able to make it into the pits, by the way. Now, on board with Daryl Carlisle leading after the early problems with Ross Smith and Marco Cerrone. Carlisle thought he timed it beautifully in traffic. It looked great, but watch this. Up the inside comes Amadeo Quiros, the senior one, driving in the platinum class, and that is for the class lead. Carlisle, just that little bit of a cost of momentum. In these cars, that's enough. Such is the skill, talent, and ability to carry momentum that's required here. Talk about the great charge of Carlos Eduardo for NGT. On board with him now, again from dead last, and on the move. But there was a huge battle raging in the platinum category. Ross Smith ducks to the inside, trying to get around and buy Daryl Carlisle, and he does. And he picks up the second spot. Remember, Kiros is out in front. Meanwhile, we hop back on board with Carlos Eduardo. The reason is he's got a great view of this moment as Tim Rosengrant straight lines to the apex, way too much momentum, and just center punches Kendall Smith, both of them done for the day. Back on board with Ross Smith. You see him run wide right there, Daryl Carlisle. There you see Ross just off to the outside. Carlisle says thank you, tucks it down to the inside, keeps it pinned to the apex. Nothing Ross can do. Carlisle picks up second, but there is your winner, Amadeo Quiros. Gets the win in the Platinum class, and Carlos Eduardo dead last to the win in the Gold Cup category. And in mid-90 degree high humidity temperatures on a hot track, tires allow great action like that, and that is the story from Yokohama. In 2009, Yokohama introduced racing's first environmentally friendly tire, the ENVR1. The ENVR1, which you can see here, um, basically was the first uh, racing tire that's uh, eco-friendly. And we achieved this by using a sustainable resource, orange oil, which is uh, taking place of uh, the petroleum products that are normally used in the compound. Yokohama's commitment to both the racing and the environment allowed them to further this development, and in 2010, they debuted the ENVR2. The uh, performance of the ENVR2 is uh, superior to that of the ENVR1. And the unique achievement of the ENVR2 is we were able to do this by producing an even more environmentally friendly tire. Um, we've added more orange oil, and we've actually added natural rubber content um, to, the, to the compound as well. And uh, basically, uh, usually natural rubber isn't used as part of the uh, racing tire compound. And so this is a, a very unique attribute that Yokohama is very proud of. The ENVR1 contained 15% renewable content. The ENVR2 has about 20. Even with the increase in renewability, there is no decrease in performance. Uh, we've actually done some back-to-back -back testing with the ENVR1 and the ENVR2 with both Patrick Long, who is a pack, uh, factory Porsche, Porsche driver, and also um, three-time GT3 champion Bob Fayetta of Competition Motorsports. Um, both the drivers were very pleased with the tire and they gave excellent uh, feedback and they basically said that the tire um, had an increase in uh, braking uh, abilities and quartering performance and that translates to an increased uh, performance and grip level. And still ahead, we hear from our winners, take a look at Porsche Worldwide and have a rare peek into the inner workings of race control. Stay with us. Welcome back everybody and let's get right to the combined results for round five. You'll see that uh, Amadeo Quiros, obviously, with that great win. Daryl Carlisle and Ross Smith, that good seesaw battle, but Smith's off, allowing Carlisle a comfortable second. Koki Trejo's fourth. Marco Cironi completes the top five and the platinum class top five. Then Carlos Eduardo, Enrique Cisneros, 1-2 for NGT Motorsports in the gold category. Then Le Safra, Mike Schein, and Rob Walton, who is very fast, has had some terrible luck. Great to see him bring it home for a finish. That, by the way, was Daryl Carlisle's third, second place in the championship, keeping him alive in the points. But let's get down and find Jamie with our platinum podium. Amadeo coming in, winning your first race here of the season. A lot of competition out there. Talk us through it. Yes, he's very tough in the beginning. Yes, Amadeo. What's up, folks? Yeah. He's very tough. You know, all the people are in the same time. But today I made my first podium in the Patron Cup, and I'm so happy. And let's see what happens tomorrow. Daryl, a fantastic run for you, starting fourth, bringing it home to finish second on the podium. A lot of action out there. Talk us through it. 
Well, from the beginning, it was tough. I mean, I don't know that Ross and uh, and uh, Marco had their tires quite warm enough, you know, going into turn one on that, you know, opening lap there. And they both, you know, came the back ends came around on them. That gave them the opportunity to get up in the lead. And then from there, the problem really of me losing the first place, you know, was the, uh, the the lap traffic. I mean, that was the issue there. And unfortunately, I had to slow down so much that Amadeo got a great run coming out of turn 12 and took the inside on me. I, I have to thank Kelly Moss. Jeff Stone did an outstanding job in the car. And then Andrew Davis, as always, he's the best driver coach out there. Yeah, it's all you, buddy. He's, thank you. Uh, very happy, Daryl Carlisle. Now let's take a look at the rest of the results. You see an 11th, third in the Gold Cup category, Eduardo Cisneros. So it's an NGT sweep of the podium. Then Joe Policastro Sr., Amadeo Quiros Jr. from pole after his problems in that off. There is your top five in gold. Then Baker, Chris Cumming, Policastro, Kendall Smith, and Tim Rosengrant. You see they're excluded, both due to penalties related to the contact between the two of them. With that, let's get down and hear from our gold class podium. Consistent, uh, fast, and a lot of luck. That's how I did it. And uh, my team gave me a great car. Great car. So I'm glad. Having fun, like always. A lot of pressure out there. Did you feel that? Yes, I felt it a lot. The heat, uh, the exhaustion. Uh, I almost fainted in the car, but amazing. This series is uh, great, and thank you for Speed being here. Oh, it was a fantastic race. I was putting a lot of pressure on Carlos. Carlos came all the way from the back to the front. He passed me, uh, missed some uh, fumbling cars, and the whole time I was on Carlos. And um, I didn't know that my brother was uh, in third place until the end, and I couldn't be happier. Eduardo, finishing on the podium for your first time this season, how did you accomplish it? I had my wife, my son Gregorio, my daughter Natalia and Emilia, all of us in my head. We've had a rough month. We're through it. I love them all so much. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for more. What momentum does this give you going into the second race this weekend? Oh, confidence, joy, and happiness. That's all I can say. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Another great drive. You know, around the globe, Porsche conducts numerous national-level racing series. Some are challenges, some are cups. That begs the question, what's the difference? A challenge is multiple-year cars. You'll have between uh, 05 and a half to um, an 010 car that runs. And a cup series is the current year car. So this year, all those would be the 10 car. So with two different classes based on model years, the series in the U.S. became the Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama. But this U.S. series is only a fraction of the Porsche worldwide racing calendar. Porsche runs in uh, 14 different countries throughout the world, and we also have, and in that we have 19 different series that, uh, that run in the world. Some of them being cup, some of them being challenge. The premier one that we have is the Super Cup, which follows every F1 race throughout the world. With so many opportunities to race these GT3 cars around the world, it would seem a driver or team would be able and pleased to race anywhere. There's some other series around the world that are maybe slightly at a lower level than we are because they are starting out. So it would be just like us five years ago. Then there's other series throughout the world that have uh, been in play for 10, 12 years that are gonna be uh, better or tougher um, competition than what we have here in the United States. But any of the drivers could move into a different series throughout the world if they choose, if their sponsor chooses, or with, if they would like to have a different experience. We've had drivers in the past that have gone and raced in Germany, some have raced in Japan, some have raced in Australia. So it, they do move around, and we like to see that. That's why we'd like, we like to have all the cars throughout the series as close as possible, so any car, any driver can move anywhere in the world and hopefully be successful. A truly remarkable company. When we come back, we're gonna take a look inside race control. That's a rarity, and also, We'll get to some great highlights from the sixth round of the Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama. The 
Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama is presented by the Patron Spirits Company, the number one ultimate tequila in the world, simply perfect. By Yokohama, where technology drives better tires. And by Porsche Motorsport North America, there are two lines that matter most in racing, the finish line and the bloodline. And folks, race control is a place very few people get to see. Those who have, well, they compare it to racing's version of mission control. Here's a look. Race control is the nerve center of any, any racetrack. All of, everything that happens on the track gets communicated to race control and any commands that go out, whether it be dispatching safety, uh, flag commands, communicating to the teams, originates from race control. Aside from keeping the track under control, the race director must also make sure teams and drivers are all on the same page when it comes to rules. Goals over the course of any event are to create expectations within the competitors so they know exactly what calls will be, what, uh, what's a penalty, what's not a penalty, um, what would be a full course yellow, what would not be a full course yellow, so that they essentially on track, the competitors know uh, what we're thinking here and what will be reacted to and what will not be. For my officiating style, there definitely tends to be more communication because I like to make sure that um, before you penalize someone, you're ensuring that they're learning something. So I like to uh, take the first step of, um, of educating someone before penalizing. So um, it's, it's full time. It, it's very busy. And to kick off round six, we had a special flyover courtesy of the Cisneros brothers, who we'll hear a bit more from in a little bit. It's a Bell 230 chopper and Marine Corps pilot Harold Manzano at the helm. What a show. And the show on the track started right away in round six. Ross Smith from his sixth straight pole leading the field up once again into turn one. Marco Cironi alongside. And the two of them get together as a squeeze play. And Ross Smith ends up on the outside. Watch Marco Cironi here. And you can see where the nose of his car was compared to the side panel of Ross. And as a result, Daryl Carlisle once again takes advantage, sweeps into the lead. And Daryl immediately able to open up just a little bit of ground over Amadeo Kiros. Great shot here up and over the rise. There goes Carlisle, followed by a field of beautiful Porsche 911 GT3 Cup machines thundering around Thunderbolt Raceway. Now, it may have been a rough start at the front, but how about this one from Kendall Smith at the back? Look at the run into turn one. Just stays to the outside and just goes blowing by a field of cars. Remember, he was excluded due to a penalty in the first race. Meant he had to start at the back. And what a remarkable start he laid down as he moved on up through the pack. On board with Eduardo Cisneros. As he, too, off of his first ever podium in the series here this season, gets right into the thick of the battle right off the bat here. Big group of people in front of him, a little bit of contact, but everybody survives it. That's the nature of racing on this track. It is a busy racetrack. It's narrow, and obviously you're going to be aggressive. You're going to stuff it down the inside on occasion, and that's going to happen. And, of course, all that battling unfolding behind the leaders right there overall going through. There's the group, and they all make it amazingly. And Kendall Smith finds a way to make it down and makes the pass underneath John Baker in the platinum car as Kendall continues his charge up through the pack. Here's some more of that tremendous battling. And there's the number 26 of Enrique Cisneros as he comes sweeping through. And up front is Michael Shine as he is closing on the... Alex Job racing machine. Enrique continues to lead in the gold category from pole. It's an on-form weekend for Enrique, to be sure, having a very, very strong run at this point as he's augering up through the pack. Once again, the NGT Motorsports machine just doing a superb job, and the pilot as well. And, of course, you remember, coached by no less a talent than factory pilot Wolf Hensler. 
So these guys uh, really have this program pretty well dialed at NGT, top to bottom. And Enrique, talk about coming alive. He was a good, good club racer, and he has evolved into a very talented racer. Another talented racer is Daryl Carlisle, continues to lead. But just a superb run for Coque Treos as he has jumped up into second. And Marco Cironi continues to be a remarkable story. There is a good look at Koki as he sits in second. And there's Marco. Six gear racing, a very small team out of Toronto. Has done some racing up in Canada, certainly. Decided to make the leap up to this category. Some of his friends said, are you sure? But he said, they've seen me drive. They know I can pedal a car pretty well. Well, he has been absolutely spectacular. The budget hasn't allowed him to make every race, but when he's shown up, he has been superb. When you think about what he achieved at the first round at Sebring and now what he's doing here, just an incredible job for Marco Cironi. Meanwhile, we continue to watch the advance of Kendall Smith here as he continues to run toward the front in the Gold Cup category after having to start in the back. And he now is closing up to Eduardo Cisneros, who, of course, had the podium yesterday. He gets awfully close. Looks to make the pass, but Eduardo, driving some absolutely precise lines, never gave the opportunity, at least at that point. And, of course, Ross Smith, after his early spin, continues his charge up through the back. That is the Platinum Maxwell Paper Racing entry, and he is on the prowl. Meanwhile, we go up to this battle once again, and taking a look, Amadeo Quiros Jr., who, of course, had that great run from pole yesterday, now ends up sort of an unforced error there, if you will, and he loses it, as does Marco Cironi. After that great run, just got away from him. Watch it right here. Looks like he's down to the inside. You see the chunk when he made the downshift, and that just absolutely made the rear wheel skip, and around he went. So problems there, and of course, more things continuing. Here's the 21 of Michael Shine, where, you guessed it, turn one. He really struggled there this weekend. And as he returns to the track, gives Marco Cironi another heart in the throat moment as he's recovering from his little bit of a moment as well. By the way, Cironi said he wouldn't be here again without the help from Porsche Motorsports North America. They look after all of these beautiful cars, and we'll look after them too when we come back. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. Highlights from round six of the Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama. Leaders pretty much remaining the same. There's a good look at some of the action in the Gold Cup category at the front. Ross Smith, though, has continued a remarkable charge from the back of the pack after his spin on the first lap and continues to ramp his way right toward the front of the action here. Top three, well, just an awesome run by Gerald Carlisle. Behind him, Koki Treos, but behind him as we go on board with the 58 of Amadeo Quiros, fresh off of his first win in the series yesterday, and he has been superb this entire weekend, a blistering pace in the blistering heat that we're dealing with right here. And this is a multi-class battle that went on for quite some time, and right in the middle of it, you see Chris coming. That's the all-orange car from World Speed Motorsports. Behind him, Kendall Smith, the Maxwell paper car. That's primarily black. And they have been going at it for quite some time. And keep in mind that you've got uh, Eduardo right in front of that group. That's Eduardo Cisneros, who has a good run going in the gold category as well. And behind them is Michael Shine, one of the platinum class entries, who is recovering from those spins. He's awfully fast, Michael is. And he's just been struggling with a couple of points on the track. There is Eduardo with coming right behind him, then Kendall right behind him. And again, that's a Gold Cup car. You see the green tint, and here comes Chris coming. He popped to the inside. You see the orange tint there. That means a Platinum Class car. He ducks to the inside and finally is able to get through. And while that wasn't a pass for class position, the bad news for Eduardo Cisneros is it now puts him square in the gun sights of the guy right behind him in that black and white Maxwell paper entry, Kendall Smith, who is driving in that recovery battle. And right behind him and getting absolutely no rest, the recovering Mike Shine, who's had those spins. And about right behind him, guess who? Ross Smith, pole sitter, who had his problems and is trying to come up through the pack. So lots of recovery action going on here. And right now, Mike Shine has the fastest guy in the series on his tail. Now, on board with Kendall Smith. Watch this move. Squeeze play. Cisnero says, nada. Not coming by, at least at that point. And Kendall said, all right, I'll have another shot at it, I hope. Meanwhile... Ross Smith was able to get down and underneath Shine and make that pass. So now he's got his brother right in front. And you can see Kendall still trying to figure a way around Cisneros. 
but he's got the pressure of Brother Ross, again, not in the same class. Ross in the new 2010 GT3 Cup car, more powerful, a little bit bigger tire, etc. wheel rim on those cars. And every one of the cars in this championship has the Patron banner across the windshield, regardless of color, because it's the title sponsor. Patron Spirits has evolved into a superb partner in racing with the International Motorsports Association. But their association in racing in general all began with current American Le Mans Series star, Scott Sharp. Scott Sharp began his racing career in go-karts at only eight years old. He eventually raced in SCCA, Trans Am, NASCAR, CART, IndyCar, and finally in 2008 reached the American Le Mans Series. His best years have been in partnership with Patron. It's been unbelievable for me to watch. This will be my sixth year with Patron. Um, and, we, and we've gone through Indy cars, you know, a couple of years uh, in the LMP1 and 2 class and now in the GT class. And, and just to see what uh, amazing activators they are, uh, you know, how they make an investment in a property like the American Mall Series or our team. And just how they activate that, how they utilize that, how they involve their distributors, their consumers. I think they really certainly in this paddock, they've set the, be the benchmark. So, so to sit back and watch as their brand just continues to grow. Uh, it's really impressive and I so just feel myself so fortunate to have the relationship I do with them. Patron's given me just an incredible opportunity to, to start Extreme Speed Motorsports. I grew up around my dad's team as a little kid and always dreamt one day of maybe having my own race team. So to be able to uh, you know, debut two, two, two Ferraris in the, in, in the American Le Mans series with Patron Livery all over them. Uh, you know, it, it's a tremendous honor, but also we you know, have a lot of pressure to perform well and make sure we want to be as perfect as possible and try to win some races and certainly go for the championship. Sharp feels that pressure on both sides of the fence with 2010 marking his first season as both a team owner and driver. Well, everybody's telling me that it's going to be very difficult to, to do the balance between being a driver and, and being an owner. Uh, I grew up around the sport. It's all I've really done since I was eight years old. So, you know, during the week, I'm at the race shop every day, and you know that's when we're worrying about budgets, we're worrying about personnel, we're worrying about planning. And when I come to the racetrack, I've always been super competitive. So for me, it's really no different. You know, I'm, I'm working with my teammates, I'm working with the engineers, I'm studying the data, because it's all about performance and going faster. So I'm hoping we can keep the two separate and just come to the racetrack and focus on nothing but trying to win races. I had the pleasure of announcing Scotty Sharp racing in Trans Am many years ago in the early part of his career. What a great talent, what a great guy, truly. Speaking of talent and good guys, Daryl Carlisle continuing to build his lead, but for Rob Walton, the if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all moment returns off for him. Meanwhile, Kendall Smith, guess who, attacking Eduardo Cisneros again, this time trying it on the inside, on the right side, and he gets through. Now, carried a bit of speed, gets it a little wide on the exit, makes it work, and then this battle for the 11th spot it has been going on for a while, and that is John Baker in the blue Porsche right behind him, the beautiful green machine of Peter Lesafra, and those two guys had been at it and after it and on and on, and finally Peter Lesafra puts together a great run, pops out at a perfect moment. This was a classic late-breaking maneuver, and again, you got to keep it to the apex, but it was Baker Got a little surprised, I think, floated out a little wide, and that opened the door for Lesafra to just be able to sweep on through, and then Baker immediately under attack from one of the Gold Cup cars. Meanwhile, up front in that platinum and overall battle, Coque Trejos, Jorge Trejos, a former IMSA GT champion back in the original IMSA GT championship days, has come back to give racing a try, clearly has lost nothing. Started fifth, that's where he qualified, and has mounted a great charge, has gone around and picked up second from Kuros, who of course is your race winner from round five. So he's having a great run, Koki is. And speaking of great runs, look at this battle right there. A bit wide for Joe Policastro, right in front of a group of cars. And here's the 88 of Marco Cironi again, that six gear racing entry, continuing to try and recover from his off and fight his way back up to the pack. And that moment unfolding right in front of him. Meanwhile, there are the top three leaders and in the platinum category, and in the Gold Cup class, it continues to be the NGT Porsche of Enrique Cisneros. But as you can see, he's got company. More to come. Welcome back, everybody. The round six action still under contest. And Marco Cironi right in the middle of a great battle in the Gold Cup class. There's Rob Walton 
Boy, tough luck for him once again watching it. But Chironi is right behind Enrique Cisneros. And that green stripe tells you that Enrique is in the Gold Cup class. He's leading it. Chironi, of course, in the Platinum class. He's looking for a way around Enrique. He's inside. He's outside. And Enrique obviously would like to keep him in between himself and his closest pursuer in class, who is a very fast gentleman named Carlos Eduardo. But look at Chironi now. Trying to come down the inside, Enrique feels the pressure, floats just a little bit wide. Now, gets out in the marbles, gets a little wobbly, and there went Carlos Eduardo. That's how that change happened. Meanwhile, up front, Amadeo Quiroz continuing to try and find a way. Koke runs just a little bit wide. They were side by side down the stretch. And watch Koke right here. No, sir. That is called slamming a door. Amadeo trying to stay put, and Koke comes right across the bows and says no. And Amadeo had to tuck back in. Koki had him covered. And Amadeo, that little bit of move offline when Koki firmly shut the door, you could see that momentum loss just ballooned it out to about three, four car lengths. And Koki was comfortable. Meanwhile, Daryl Carlisle looking very strong. There's Koki now continuing to hang on with Kiros right behind him. Now we go back to this great scrap unfolding in the Gold Cup category. Chris Cumming, who had started 14th overall, had a tough race in round five. His time was not there. Has had a superb drive here in race six. He's a Formula Mazda Pro Open Wheel pilot in the expert category is his specialty. And he and World Speed coming up and joining this ranks right now. Meanwhile, the 29 of Eduardo Cisneros, remember on the podium in round five, is coming up behind one of the Pola Castro machines as he continues to work firmly here. And of course, the Cisneros clan, very, very involved in racing, but more importantly, very involved as a family. And even though brother Andre not racing here today, he's here and he stopped by and we took a little bit of time to check into Brother Lula. Yeah, this is our first year racing. We, we always grew up as car fanatics and um, we, we were always good behind the wheel. We would just get caught all the time. So we figured just bring it on the track. And uh, we started uh, last year, uh, we did a couple of um, driver's events and we decided to get into cup cars, be safe, have a full roll cage. And uh, one thing led to another. It happened very quickly over a couple of weeks. We said, well, you know, I think we need to jump into a cup car. And then from there, we said, well, we'll just do you know, some club events. And a week later, we all ended up signing up for IMSA without really knowing the whole story. So it wasn't something that we really sat and thought about. We just kind of did it. Um, I think if we thought about it, <laughs> it would have taken longer. We might have postponed it for a year. So I'm, I'm glad it happened the way it did. We got out into this blindly, and um, it's 10 times better than I ever expected it. And it's, and it's great to be able to have someone to, to get tips from, to you know, share stories. And we help each other in, in, in trying to analyze what we're doing, what we're doing different. You know, how, why is he faster? When we look at the data, we talk to each other and it, and, it's, and it works really well. This is, if anything, this is the greatest stress reliever there is. It's, um, love my brothers and my best friends in the world and to be able to share such a great experience with them is, you know, it makes, makes it all worthwhile. No matter what happens on the track, no matter, it's always one story after another. So. Couldn't be happier. We all we all work together, so we do see each other. But it's a time where we can all be together. We're not thinking about work. We're just unplugging. You know, sometimes our families are with us or not, our kids. But it's really a time for the brothers to bond and do our own thing and just really kind of put the day to day aside. Uh, it's, it's it's a great feeling. It really takes you back just to being your brother. Well, that brotherly love extends off the racetrack because you always want to beat your teammate. But if your teammate's your brother, game over. Welcome back, folks. We're going to take you right through the checkers. And Daryl Carlisle, because of that battle going on behind him, has been able to stretch his margin. And you can see the two cars of uh, Coque Treos and Amadeo Quiros are still in the battle. And that is allowing Carlisle to ease away just a little bit. And make no mistake about it, Daryl Carlisle and that Kelly Moss team, they have put together a great weekend. And Daryl has driven brilliantly today, as has Koki coming up from fifth. Now, here is your class leader in the Gold Cup class. That's Carlos Eduardo in the gold NGT car, and he is doing everything he can to try and keep the number 18, that is Chris Cumming, right behind him, even though Cumming is in a platinum car, and the reason is, is because he wants to keep the car behind them, Enrique Cisneros, have a little bit of a buffer, 
And believe me, Carlos is fast enough to do just that. And right now, coming doing everything he can to try and find a way by because he'd like to get up and take a shot at Marco Cironi, who is up front of him right now. Now that will change, we'll talk about that when we get to the results. Meanwhile, let's take a look at another great battle. That scrap for 11th. You saw Peter Lesafra make the pass. Here's Baker. And look at Jay Policastro in the Graviac Performance Center car coming up and trying to take a run at Baker. And if you take a close look at the left rear quarter panel of the Policastro Motorsports Porsche of Jay Policastro, he's got some damage. He was obviously in one of those shoving matches that we've seen a number of in today's race. But even so, not hampering him too much. And he is able to continue to mount pressure on the back of Baker, the number 47 blue platinum class Porsche. Meanwhile, we hop on board with the 26 of Enrique Cisneros, and he is watching as Marco Cironi just goes slicing by underneath. And of course, Cironi is trying to catch that little orange dot up in front. Cironi trying to get after Chris Cumming. And we'll explain a little bit more about what's going to unfold. Meanwhile, Ross Smith continuing to battle up through the pack, and he is coming after it. And in this charge, Ross laid down a brand new race lap record, and it was spectacular. Beautiful move here as he gets by Gold Cup leader Carlos Eduardo. And that puts all of the Platinum Class top five up in front at this stage. Meanwhile, Amadeo Quiros not giving up, taking one more look, another run down to the inside, and Koki says no once again. But you can see that battle, the pace that Amadeo has been heaping on Treos has closed them back up a little bit again on Carlisle. But once they moved out and started that side-by-side -side battling, nope, Carlisle able to draw away once again. And it is truly his day as he comes through in the Platinum class. The same for Carlos Eduardo. He puts together a fast lap record in the Gold Cup class on his race today. And up front, here we go. Daryl Carlisle brings it home to the checkers. A superb run. Look how close Trejos was. And Kiros completes the podium. And once again, there is your winner in the Gold Cup. We'll come back to visit with him in just a minute. The Patron GT3 Challenge by Yokohama is presented by the Patron Spirits Company, the number one ultimate tequila in the world, simply perfect. And by Yokohama, where technology drives better tires, and by speed. We're back, round six in the books. Let's take a look at the combined results. Daryl Carlisle, a great win. Koki Treos, a great drive into second. Kuros, Chris Cumming, and Ross Smith complete the top five overall and platinum class. Then Carlos Eduardo, Enrique Cisneros, and Kendall Smith. That's your podium in the Gold Cup. Then Eduardo Cisneros and Mike Shine complete the top ten overall. Now we'll take a look at the rest of the pack in a moment, but first, let's check in with Jamie and our top two in the platinum class. Daryl, bringing it home, your first win of the season. You fought hard for this one, though. How much pressure were you feeling? Uh, the entire way. The, the ASCO guys are right on my tail. You know, Koki was right there the entire time, and behind him, he was getting pressure from his teammate. So it was tough going. The entire race was, you know, was stressful. What does a win like this mean to you at this point in the championship? Oh, it means everything, you know, to be able to come out here and win. And, you know, I got a second yesterday and a win today. So it's incredibly important. And, you know, it's, it just feels so good. And it gives you so much confidence to come out here and, and do well. And, you know, I, I have a great team, you know, Kelly Moss and Andrew Davis, my family, Patty, Caitlin, Dane's at home, my son, they all support, very supportive of me. And I can't thank them enough, all, all of them. And Yokohama, Porsche, Patron, they're the best sponsors. They really, you know, put a great effort towards this series. Congratulations on a great weekend. Thanks, Jamie. Koki, another podium finish for you this season, but there was a big battle with Amadeo. Talk about that. Oh, yeah. There was a big battle with Amadeo. There was a big battle with Darrell, but I, I, I love racing with Darrell because he's a very clean driver. He doesn't step out of line. He keeps his line, and the car worked out very good. And, yeah, and Amadeo was on my tail. I, could, I kept on seeing the Costa Rican flag behind me. I said, man, the flag is in front of me. How come I see it? All the time behind but yeah it's I'm, I'm very happy to be in the podium again and to pick up some points towards the series congratulations thank you very much Appreciate it. 
Great drives all, and as we take a look at the rest of the field results, you'll notice Marco Cironi actually now scored 14th overall. He was a judge to have a created avoidable contact in that first turn incident with Ross Smith that was penalized a lap. La Safra hangs on to win that battle for 11th. But right now, let's get back to Jamie with the top two. Carlos bringing it home, another race win. You didn't start up front, though. How hard were you pushing? I was pushing as hard as I can. I just had uh, tons of luck, a uh, lot of consistency, and they gave me a great car today. Great car. Oh, it was a very exciting race. Uh, I was able to get a, a gap at first, and then exhaustion started setting in, and I had a wobble when a 2010 car tried to pass me, and, and that was Carlos' opportunity to uh, slot inside and, and pass me at that point. I was very tired, so I'm glad I was able to finish the second. Well, everybody taking on lots of fluids. It was brutally hot. Here are the points after six round. Platinum class, Smith, Carlisle, Kiros, Trejos, and John Baker. And Carlisle has closed it up and made this one interesting. Then in the gold class, Carlos Eduardo, Enrique Cisneros, the NGT cars. But Kendall Smith, I don't think he can say enough about the drive he put in today from almost dead last up to that podium. And you make those points close in. Boy, it's going to be a great, great bit of racing. As we head into the next round of the championship, we'll give you a little bit more about that in just a couple of minutes. It's coming up in Utah. And looking forward to that one. Of course, a huge thanks to the folks from Patron Spirits Company, from Yokohama Tire Corporation, and from Porsche Motorsports North America, all of the IMSA officials, and the great volunteers that come out and work these races from SCCA and other clubs as well to make it all happen. The next telecast will be coming up Saturday, August 7th, 10 p.m. Pacific time on speed from Utah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, take care.